This video is part two of chapter six and we'll be discussing other organelles as well as a variety of internal cellular structures. So the first organelles we're going to talk about are the ones that are responsible for converting energy from one form into another. And those are the mitochondria and the chloroplasts. Mitochondria are the sites of cellular respiration, which is a process that uses oxygen to generate ATP. ATP is the primary energy molecule found in cells. Chloroplasts are found in plants and algae, and they're the sites of photosynthesis. And then we'll briefly talk about peroxisomes. Now, mitochondria are found in all eukaryotic cells. That includes plants. One of the biggest confusions around these two organelles is that mitochondria are not found in plants. Chloroplasts are only found in plants and algae, and as I stated, carry out photosynthesis. But mitochondria are found in all eukaryotic cells. So if we start with mitochondria, they have a smooth outer membrane and an inner membrane that's folded into what are called cristae. Cristae is just the Latin word for folded. The inner membrane creates two compartments inside the mitochondria, the intermembrane space and the mitochondrial matrix. Some metabolic steps of cellular respiration happen in the matrix and others happen on the cristae. And we're going to spend a lot more time on this stuff in another chapter. So if we look at mitochondrial structure, we can see there's this outer membrane as well as this folded inner membrane, okay? And then inside the inner membrane is what's called the matrix. And then between the outer membrane and the inner membrane is what's called the intermembrane space. Chloroplasts, on the other hand, contain the green pigment chlorophyll, which is responsible for, or partly responsible for photosynthesis. And that's the primary metabolic process that occurs in chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are found in the leaves and other green organs of plants and in algae. If we look at the chloroplasts, they're similar to mitochondria in a couple of ways. One, they have multiple membranes. Another is that they contain their own DNA. That's something we didn't mention before, but mitochondria contain their own DNA, so they are similar to chloroplasts in that way as well. If we notice chloroplasts have two outer membranes, and then they have these stacks of membranes which are formed into discs. These are called the thylakoid membranes. They are where a majority of photosynthesis occurs. Notice that there's also an area inside called the stroma, and there's also an intermembrane space inside the chloroplast. So chloroplasts and mitochondria are very similar in a number of ways, but they're also very different in other ways. As I mentioned, the chloroplast structure includes the thylakoids, which are stacked membranous sacs forming individual stacks called granum. And then they have the stroma, which is the internal fluid. The stroma is similar to the matrix and the mitochondria because they're both internal fluids. The chloroplast is one of a group of plant organelles called plastids. Another set of structures that's really important to cells is what's called the cytoskeleton. And it is a network of fibers that extends throughout the cytoplasm in a cell. It's responsible for a number of different functions, but the two that are primary are organizing the cellular structures and activities and then anchoring many of the organelles. It's called a cytoskeleton because it's sort of like the skeleton inside the cell. There are three types of molecular structures that are part of the cytoskeleton, the microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. We're not going to get into a lot of detail on these. One of the major functions is support for the cell and the cytoskeleton helps do this and also helps maintain the shape of the cell. It also interacts with proteins called motor proteins that allow cells to move around or to move stuff within the cell. So inside the cell, vesicles travel actually along tracks provided by the cytoskeleton, sort of like an internal train system that moves stuff around inside the cell. As I mentioned earlier, there are three main fibers that make up the cytoskeleton, and these are all protein-based fibers, the microtubules, the microfilaments, and the intermediate filaments. Microtubules are hollow rods that are fairly small and have a variety of functions, and these are the ones we're going to spend the most time talking about. They help shape the cell, they guide the movement of organelles around the cell, and they also help to separate chromosomes during cell division. We'll learn more about this in a later chapter. Two of the structures that are important in the cytoskeleton are what are called the centrosomes and the centrioles. Microtubules grow out of the centrosome, which is near the nucleus. And in animal cells, the centrosome has a pair of centrioles, which are microtubule structures that are also important in moving chromosomes around during cell division. Again, we'll get to this stuff in a later chapter. 
For now, we're going to talk primarily about two cellular structures that help cells move around in their medium. And these are composed of microtubules, and the two structures are flagella and cilia. And they are extensions of the cell that project from the plasma membrane of the cell. Cilia and flagella help move cells or can make cells move other things around in the medium in which they live, but they differ in a couple of different ways. First of all, flagella typically occur as single organ or single structures on a cell, as in this sperm cell. And the way they make cells move is through a whipping motion. You can see this on the sperm cell here. That's really the only place in a human you're going to find flagella. Cilia, on the other hand, occur in multiples of hundreds, typically, and they move more like the oars of a boat if you were rowing a boat. And you can see here on this electron micrograph that there are lots and lots of cilia on a particular cell. In humans, you find cilia in your trachea, and they are responsible for moving um, and capturing debris that's inhaled during breathing. There are also components outside the cell, which we call extracellular components. And what they do is they help connect cells and in some cases coordinate cellular activities. We're not going to go into a lot of detail of these, but into these, but we're going to check a couple of things about them. Most cells do synthesize and secrete materials outside the plasma membrane. And as I mentioned, they're involved in a variety of functions. Plants secrete what's called a cell wall, which is made primarily of the carbohydrate cellulose. Uh, some prokaryotes and fungi also have cell walls, but they're not necessarily made out of cellulose. They're usually made out of chitin or other materials. What the cell wall does for a plant, though, is it protects it, helps maintain its shape, and it pre prevents excessive uptake of water. As I mentioned, they're made mostly of cellulose fibers, so they're very strong. In animal cells, the secretion is called the extracellular matrix. It's not a hard, fibrous network like the cell wall is, but it's made up of glycoproteins such as collagen, proteoglycans, and a substance called fibronectin. The, cellular, the extracellular matrix is kind of a sticky secretion that's, you know, like I said, surrounds the animal cell. And what it does is it helps keep cells bound together and it also helps make them flexible. If we look at the extracellular matrix here, we can see that there's lots of different proteins 